I'm Lee Brown. This is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. Today, we've got Tracy Hayes. He's going to talk a little bit about his life in the lender world, and you'll hear a little bit about what's going on in Northeast Florida. So enjoy the conversation. Check out the show notes for more information, and I'll see you on the other side. You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. Before you get the rest of the story, I'd love to share a quick message from today's sponsor. If you've never heard of Follow Up Boss, you're going to love it. It's going to get you organized in a way that will actually impact your business for profitability and for better excellence with those you're serving. For more information, go to followupboss.com slash crazy. So talk to me a little bit. Who is Tracy Hayes and what is real estate excellence? And give me a little backdrop. Yeah. So I've been in the, actually in the mortgage business for 17 years. Started at Quicken Loans back in 2005. I chased my now wife to Michigan. And at the time, they were hiring about 120 people a month, putting you through a 30-day training and boom, you're out on the floor because you didn't need the licenses like you need now. Right. And after eight and a half years there, I actually then, I was already working from home because we made our way to Florida because my wife's from Florida. And then I started working with Loan Depot in the call center environment. But after 12 years of that, there's a little burnout in the call center situation. So I jumped out into the retail world. Most recently, spent the last three years actually with a large builder here in town doing a lot of their lay down loans basically, but volume, which I'm used to obviously from the call center. So it was great from that standpoint. Something I don't really want to get into, but just to give you a background, why I'm back at Loan Depot, not that that's the subject that really I want to talk with you about is more the podcast and the real estate, great real estate agents I have come on. But while I was at the broker lured me over with a lot of money only to find out That was the last bit of his money. (laughs) And he thought because of my podcast and my podcast had been out almost a year at that time, he sees me all the time on the social media, right? So he just thought all these top agents were just going to rain loans on me. I'm like, dude, it doesn't quite happen that way. The podcast was designed and I'll go and stepping into that. I started the podcast because I was doing the builder business. I had a few agents referring me some other stuff, which I get paid more for. I said, you know what? I'm going to take this time because I have this huge builder pipeline. I want to take this time to start building relationships. And I came upon, well, between John Maxwell in my head with influence and credibility. Yeah, I love his stuff. And then I had this ad, Travis Chappell, who has a podcast called Build Your Network. He's also familiar with Guestio.com. He actually is the CEO of Guestio. I hired him as a coach. I had never listened to a podcast before prior to that. And so I started purging in. Yours was one of them that came up because you have a great name and obviously you got to listen to it at least once, right? And so I've been following your stuff and I actually had not watched the videos until yesterday. I started, I went on your YouTube channel because usually I just listen to it, the audios. So June of last year, I launched Real Estate Excellence Podcast with the entire goal. I brought in a handful of vendors, but in the 98 episodes that I've done, 90 of them are just top agents in the area. And it's now become, I sat down with a top broker, I don't know if you know the area of uh, Northeast Florida, but Nocatee, Ponte Vedra is the area, you know, the high-end area to be in. And his office is right there in the local shopping center with Remax. And what my virtual assistant calling, getting a coffee appointment for me, sat down and usually, you know, 45 minutes, an hour is a pretty good coffee appointment. We were sat there for three hours. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. He just wanted to spill into me everything about... I don't know if it's just he wanted, he was prepping me to invite him to be on the podcast, but it's now kind of a thing. Now, now I reach out. They're like, oh, we're honored to be on the show, you know, that type of thing. So I've built up that. I know a ton of agents. I know a ton of agents in Northeast Florida. Who was it? That was James Valente with Remax Unlimited. Okay. Who do you know? You know, Melissa Ricks. Well, I mainly know a lot of the leadership. Diana Galavis is the president for the Northeast Florida Association, and Kim mm-hmm. Knapp is one of the best Kim in Knapp. the state of Florida. All right. Well, I want you to, after the show, write down, take a little note. I want you to send a note to Miss Knapp. I invited her on the show after seeing her at an event a couple months, but not well, maybe about a month and a half or so ago. And I went up to her personally. I said, Kim, I'd really like to have you on the show because a lot of the people that were in the room had already been on the show. And so I messaged her on Facebook and I'm like, Hey, you want to be on the show? Because she asked me why I did the podcast. And I explained her basically what I just told you. And she goes, Oh, that's amazing. I'm like, Okay, let's get you scheduled up. 
went dead. So I followed up with her the other day and she goes, so what's the format? That was her question. So I explained to her, I said, hey, what led you in the real estate? It's first half, second half. I dig into your ideology, why you think, why you are, Kim's very recognized in the area. Yes, I wanted them to tell people about themselves. It's all about them. I let them carry the weight. And I like this is what I preference the show when anyone's comes on. I said, this, this show is about you. So if a agent wants to possibly be on your team or there's an agent out there that's hit a lid, can't not advancing or, you know, that you're going to give some sort of advice that hopefully inspires them. And trust me, I've heard some great stories. I really need to write a book. I keep saying that because there's some really inspirational ladies, especially here in the area that have come from nothing to great stuff. Well, I mean, you've got a past president of the National Association there with Kathy Watley, and then you've got Russell Grooms, who's built one of the most successful businesses in real estate. And Mm -hmm. talk inspirational, you should talk to Ant Stroud. He's a relatively early career realtor. He's in the in the reserves, so he's still doing. Wife is his wife in the business? Do you know? I don't have any idea, but he's in the National Guard, so a lot of his stuff is he's back and forth with real estate serving the country. He's amazing. So you've got like a an endless list. Honey hole of great people there. And Kim yes. is the queen of guarding her time. <laughs> yeah. but it's a hard skill to learn in real estate because most don't. And that's why they burn out, which you've experienced. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But she's so good at pouring into other people. And then have you met her niece, Carrie Knapp? No, no. The, actually, the first I knew of her, I've heard her name. And then the first time I actually saw her at our the rebar camp that they had here in the spring, she was their keynote. And then Landmark Title is our big title company. Everyone, everyone likes Landmark Title. And they actually built a headquarters with a classroom. And that's where I ran into her because it was a real producer's top magazine sponsored uh, event and training. So obviously her being in that class, she was there. And obviously we support the real producers. So I was pinned her down in there. to. Oh, then I do know you make money then because that ain't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They changed over leadership here early 2021. No, the former person, just whatever her situation is. And the, the couple that picked it up actually came down from Atlanta a few years ago. They actually have a pest control company and a home inspection company. So she's, but her background is journalism and they are the nicest people in the world and they are really growing it. And I'm glad I got in with them early. They're spotlighting some really great people. The quality yeah. that they put out is beautiful. All right. So let's talk a little bit. What you want to talk about today on Crazy Shit? What's the angle you brought with you? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that question. And trust me, the the thought went through my head. I'd really like to, for me to promote the podcast and get out there listening to Travis and getting on other people's podcasts and share the word, which hopefully get them to listen to a lot of the inspirational stories. The collateral benefit is obviously- They'll come find you if you tell a good story on my podcast. That's Uh, how this works. uh, You're a lot better storyteller than me. I could tell you that. (laughs) But I can give you some of the stuff. It's amazing. You know, A lot of these agents I've never met before face-to-face. And they come on and the things they tell me, you know, how they were on food stamps years ago, or they just got divorced and had nothing. And then where they're at now and just stories like that, that just blow your mind. I do have in pretense to my book that I want to write, (laughs) they're common themes. So that might be something to dig into is what are the common themes that I'm hearing? Because the book that I would write would be, you know, here are the chapters, but here are the stories behind those because everyone's story is different, similar themes. All right. So in your life, what have you lived through in real estate that you still can't believe it ever happened? I kind of want to hear the story about that broker that spent their last dollar to bring you over. That's kind of oh. astonishing. Okay. <laughs> also, and we won't call any names, but no, I mean, of course in real estate not. and in mortgage and everywhere in our space, we do have people that will absolutely put all their money in one space and then they figure they can sell their way out of the hole instead of thinking about all the financial repercussions of not having a foundation. Right. He wanted me to come over, run his branch here in Jacksonville, and he would go open more branches because his immediate goal, the short-term goal was to be a correspondent lender and then eventually become a lender. And my mistake was I did not ask around it. I was had a hundred loans in my pipeline with the builder lender, and I didn't want to spoil that or get any conflict. So I kept it on the down low and only went to a couple of people. What I know now, after talking to people, if I asked around, I probably never would have gone over there. But he had a branch in Atlanta and all they were doing in 21 was refis. And he told me he spent $3 million on buying leads for refinances and they were doing it. So he opened the branch here. He had a handful of people going, but he wanted me to take over. He goes, what's it going to take? What's it going to take? 
he used the term, you are everywhere. And I knew what it meant by that is because the content that we produce from a podcast, the reels and the, you know, so forth. I don't even have my YouTube channel is going to launch here. I got 80 videos to boom, jump out on YouTube. Yeah. Of all these things. I procrastinated on that for so long enough. But anyway, he's like, you're everywhere. I'm like, okay. So I come over and he was building out an office. We were in a temporary office for a few weeks. And I mean, Lee, just simple things like they had planned an event. I wasn't even there a week in an event that they had already scheduled a panel with some real estate agents to bring some other real estate agents in. I'm like, uh, where's everyone's name tag? That's like standard procedure. Here's your laptop. Here's your name tag. I mean, that's real estate, right? <laughs> that's Yeah. They didn't, it's stuff like that. Several weeks later, mid-June, I asked the assistant, I said, where's everyone's name tag? Oh, it's not in the budget. I'm like, oh, Ooh, yeah. So people quit. Heading into 4th of July, one of his top guys that I only saw a couple of times because he had like 10 years experience. He worked at home. He did a few loans a month. His wife does well. That's all he wanted to do. And he was in the, I did a podcast with an agent. We had set apart a room and I was bringing agents into the office. I mean, these are top people. These people are coming in the office. And on Mondays, we had our sales meeting. I would have these people actually come in and basically join the sales meeting and allow, because he was hiring all these unlicensed inexperienced loan officers. And so I'm like, okay. And then he had the handful of processors there. And these people were, you know, they were allowed to ask this top agent, which where would they get the setting, right? I was creating those settings for him. And then we'd go do a podcast because I like to do it live, obviously, because, you know, the local people build the relationship by being face-to-face. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. So one of those top guys quits the week before 4th of July one of his top recruits, who I think has great problems, she's actually working for someone else right now. She leaves on Friday. I'd already headed to Georgia to family 4th of July event. And she actually messaged me and said, hey, I just want to let you know I quit. And I just wanted to let you know. And I'm like, oh. And then she starts telling me, this guy was probing her going, well, what if you just reported to me directly and not Tracy? And he tried to make it blame it on me. She's like, there's nothing wrong with Tracy. Tracy was being nice guy, coaching and encouraging. And at that point, me and my wife are like, yeah, we got to get out of this thing. But he had offered me a sign-on bonus, salary, and all this stuff. I was his highest paid guy. So mm-hmm. when I came back, basically Thursday after 4th of July, I get a phone call at 5.30 in the evening. And he goes, uh, hey, this is Tracy, Matt, you're on a recorded line. Uh, you no longer work for me. And I'm like, uh, the, just a breath of fresh air actually went through me. I knew it was going to be a challenge because I had to get my business restarted. Sure. No more salary, all that stuff. But the breath of fresh air went through me and he's like, I'll ship you all your stuff. I'm like, no, I'll be up there in 30 minutes because all my podcast gear was all, you know, a thousands of dollars worth of podcast gear set up in our little studio. So find out later, he had already cut pay for the processors. I didn't even know oh. that. Cut them again here recently. And I guess the half of them left. That was a couple of weeks ago. And one of the people that's still there, you know, messages me and updates me on stuff like that. But his thing in the bottom line story, and you understand this being an agent, he was very transactional. When I told him, I said, it's relationships. You've got to have a number of touches. He'd go into a real producer's event and go to these top people and go, hey, I got loan officers that will come over and call you, call on your old database that aren't responding anymore. They'd like, okay, yeah, all right, whatever. And then I had a top agent. She came on the podcast earlier that year. Was one that she, had, she was on this big recruiting thing for her boutique brokerage. So I called her up and said, hey, what can we do to help you recruit? Can we set up a panel? What can we do? She goes, I'm really busy this summer. Let's regroup in September. I'm like, okay, great. I tell him that. He goes, call her back and tell her we'll come over and teach her agents how to get more leads. I'm like, you're not an agent. I'm not an agent. And you're going to tell the broker who's like, main kind of thing is how to help her people grow their business, right? That's kind of like what a broker does, right? And he's so he was totally just just doesn't understand the business. If you've ever wondered why some realtors do more business than others, then you pay attention to them and do what they do. In fact, one of my favorite friends in real estate is Deborah Beagle. She's in the Nashville area. And she will tell you as managing broker of the Ashton Group that the agents who join her team on Follow Up Boss are getting an average of two homes under contract in the first 90 days. If you want to be like Miss Beagle, go to followupboss.com slash crazy. You'll be really glad you checked it out. And frankly, so will your clients because they'll get to use you and be amazed by your real estate awesomeness. Go to followupboss.com slash crazy. It goes to the heart of what we often see in real estate is there's not a sustainability plan. I mean, Mm -hmm. sustainability has to look long-term and that's relationships, But it's also not having all your eggs in one basket. When you said they were built on refinance, all I can think is, man, 
The refinance yeah. business right now is completely dead. Zero. Now, it might come back, but I think we're a long way from that because I still don't think rates are done going up. And I've been right all year and I'm not going to stop bragging about that because I'm so tired of people who don't understand basic economics. But then you, you look did at a the- video the other day, I thought on your social media that was really talked about. It. it was excellent. I actually pushed it onto my page. It was well done talking about that. Well, there's a relationship of inflation mm-hmm. and interest rates. And no matter mm-hmm. what the government wants to say and lie about what inflation is, those of us that actually go to the grocery store know exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. The relationship with housing. And my frustration comes from people who have lived on refinance, have continued to say to people, go ahead and do something because you can refinance. It's not supposed to be mm-hmm. because you can refinance. That should be just something you do perhaps, but we've turned this whole business into everybody buys, everybody refinances, which is fascinating because in the 22 years I've been in, you didn't talk about refinance constantly until we saw the great recession start. And suddenly we had this artificially low rate. Right. And then of course people got spoiled by it. So you look at that and it becomes a good cautionary tale about who you affiliate with and what is their mindset. And are they looking for that transaction right now? which would be the refi business the last few years, mm-hmm. or they're looking at that relationship. And he could probably have approached those top agents differently by asking if they wanted help instead of saying, I'll bring in the help. Because there's a lot of people that are great at what they do, love hearing fresh ideas, but yeah. you don't tell them they need it. They don't necessarily want to hear that. <laughs> right. Well, to act like you're smarter than them in their space. That's like, hold on it. <laughs> yeah. But you might be smarter. It's all the way that you bring it in, right? Yep. I did a video that I actually never posted. I had my marker board and did this perfect storm to play off George Clooney's movie, The Perfect Storm, where he was the fisherman. And it was the whole inflation. It was, I think, a housing demand at the top, fuel prices, and then the lack of supply. You know, these builders can't get the things they need on time. And when these people say, oh, well, some of the, I see realtors do it a lot, but I see loan officers doing it too. It just drives me nuts. Well, they're still at historically low rates. Yeah, but our houses are at historically high prices. <laughs> you well, you got to tell the whole story, but I think yeah. that's what the consumer wants from their local lender. It's what they want from their realtor. But if somebody is calling a call center that's five states away, that person on the phone with you might be experiencing a different market. They don't yep. know what's happening. 100%. Anymore. I mean, it's so interesting to think about the mistakes that we could be avoiding by, first of all, leaning on people that are right next to us in our market, but then just thinking about what is the long-term end goal here? Is it to give me a 20-year picture or is it to get my cash in your pocket now? And frankly, it's we should be asking that about everything we spend our money on yeah. today, girl. <laughs> well, as I, I told my wife the other day, I said, hey, well, she's an agent. She's done very well organically in what we've done. But I said, honey, we've got to prepare. This could be a couple months or a couple years. More of the experts that I'm seeing online are saying basically when the administration changed. So a couple of years. So we need to just buckle down and continue doing the things that we do. I need to just continue as a loan officer, continue having my coffee appointments, continue just doing my thing as the podcast and just keep trudging along because when this is all over, these guys that are been doing three and four loans a month are going to be down to one or zero and they're going to fall out from the loan officer. And then, you know, in the real estate agents, there's a flush out. And I said, but when the dam breaks at the other end, we will be there because we've been through this before. (laughs) Yeah. So for the realtor or for the consumer who's watching and listening to the podcast and they're Mm -hmm. unfamiliar with how the loan side works, you keep mentioning like you had a hundred loans in the pipeline and you talk about two to four a month. On average, how many loans should a loan officer have per month to be feasible financially? Well, depending on who you're talking to, what pipeline, when I say pipeline, I mean, they got a contract attached to it. Right. I mean, but yeah. for the general public who's watching this, because most of my audience is actually not in real estate, they are right. regular people. So give them a little bit of inside baseball on how that works. Because obviously the price of the house matters, the loan type matters, the credit score and all the fees add up. But right. if, if you are doing one loan a month, are you going to be able to breathe? Is it two loans a month? Is it 10? What does a loan officer have to have to breathe? In my opinion, (laughs) I mean, we're paid fairly well per loan. As if you look at a real estate agent, you you say, oh, that one deal, you're paid very well. But all the other stuff that's done that we do on the back end that no one actually sees the marketing and all that stuff that comes out, your typical loan officer, 
in most places, if they're doing three to five closings a month, that's great. Now, a year ago, summer 21, well, pretty much that whole period, you would be getting calls, getting that pre-call contract like coming the next day. You dearly right. did not have, and of course, in the builder situation that I was in for most of the last years, those hundred loans were obviously built, right? So they might be closing in 30 days. They might be, well, of course, some of them were going 12, 15 months. Right. right. I mean, materials. Yeah. But at the average retail loan officer, which I've now backed to being, you've got to be constantly taking probably 20 to 30 applications right now. We're getting a lot of renters who are being or like, oh, yeah, the rent's going up. We may need to buy a house. And of course, generally they're renting it's because, you know, they got some credit issues. Maybe they're whatever their financial situation picture is not perfect. So I'm doing a lot of, luckily we have the software as a lot of companies do. So, oh yeah, three to five, you're good. Three to five, you're good as an individual loan officer. Yes. To answer your question. (laughs) You are a rambler and you're killing me because my episodes stay short. All right. So the reason I'm asking that question, if somebody is a consumer and they're Mm -hmm. ready to buy a house, is that a fair question to ask the loan officer? of how many transactions do you have in your pipeline per month so that they will know they're not being sold something out of the ordinary because the loan officer is desperate? Is that a good measure to use? Not necessarily anymore. After the 2008 collapse, when I first started at Quicken Loans in 05, let's just say just a hypothetical situation to answer that question is if the interest rate was 6% that day and you, you know, it's par rate for the day and I was able to charge you six and a quarter, I would get bonused off of that. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. If you look in the old Quicken Loans reviews, we called it the green bar. That was positive. We weren't going short on the loan. But we were going quite positive. Now, the company sets the rates for the day. If we want to try to beat somebody, we may go shorter. Maybe someone's offering a quarter percent lower and we'll match that rate. So the company's in their eyes going short because like any product, they're selling it for that amount of money, that 6% for this much. So we were going to take a little bit of a loss to match the 5.75, but still, you know, obviously it's not losing for the company overall. It's just not the per loan model. Today, you can't do that. So what I tell customer, you want the best rate, find the best loan officer that most of your agent is going to refer you, probably someone they've done business with and then they can trust. If you don't think they have the best rate, go get a couple loan estimates from some other loan offs and send it to them and say, can you match or beat this? So you have the best loan officer and the best rate in your mind, and you're good. And you have a peace of mind as a consumer and go home with that. Don't go chasing the rate because what you'll find is those cheaper rates often relate to service. And they come with fees that are often not quite disclosed until you get a little later in the process. And then people just throw their hands up because they're so deep in at that point. Well, they really put the Dodd-Frank, really put the hammer to them. When anything changes on that loan, for whatever reason... Well, I'm not uh, talking about on the loan. I'm talking about in that pre-approval process because that's when people are getting those early estimates and they're getting all these information. They hey, get solid question. Solid question. They get question. relationally tied to the lender. When you're relationally yes. tied, you're less likely to want to go somewhere else because none of that Dodd-Frank applies until you started the process. Yes. I need to do a better video on this. I've done this before, but I wanted to actually have a poster of a loan estimate. Lender to lender is section A and what interest rate you're getting. And then if you are getting any credits and they're in section J of that loan estimate, the rest of that loan estimate is garbage. Right. Prior, then after you get a contract and we actually get the numbers from the title company, then it becomes real. Right. Section A, section J, if there's any credit and what interest rate you're getting, that's it right there. You should totally do a video on that because that would help people. And I can explain it all day long, but then they fall in love with the loan officer and then they get down the road and then it's too late to get them out. And so we always want to protect people from day one of here's ask good questions, find out some Mm. good information because this is a really big deal that you're doing. Well, in the go about how the bait and switch, if you want to call it, because that's what we're talking about. (laughs) When I was in the call center and you had those people and the only question they know to ask you is what's the interest rate? What's the interest rate? They don't know anything else. They're not actually comparing your experience or quality or they're calling a call center in Michigan or so forth. And The reality is you don't have a contract. They can tell you anything they want. They really can. And would do it because if I don't quote them a very aggressive rate, maybe a quarter or half a percent lower than what it actually is that day, because they don't have a contract and probably you're going to be weeks before they do and rates change every day. We have an excuse to get out. I'm going to quote you a low enough rate to get you to call me back. Right. So be prepared and understand that rate is not the question at the time. You need to shop 
service and then obviously a good real estate agent like yourself, the recommendation. There you go. Rate is not the be all end all. So I love it. We'll wrap up on that because we're already a long episode, but thank you to all the <laughs> listeners who hung in there. And I'm, I'm sorry for rambling. Joe. They know I'm not Joe Rogan. I can't do a four hour podcast. I can't even listen to his and I love him, but holy crap, right. they're long. Right. But Trace, somebody wants to come find your podcast and hear from some of these agents that you've been able to have conversations with. How did they hunt you down? Yeah. So the easiest place is Facebook. I actually changed my business Facebook page to Real Estate Excellence Podcast. So it's very simple there. If you go on Apple, Spotify, or your favorite, whatever platform you like to listen to your podcast and just search Real Estate Excellence, I'm the only one out there that was planned, <laughs> as you need, your unique name is too, uh, yeah, to your trademark, podcast. You better trademark it. Yep. But yeah, if you want to listen to great agents in Northeast Florida, or you're looking to come down, you're welcome to connect me. I speak to them every day. And it really is like a personal development course every time I speak to them. I love it. And it is such a game changer when you hear from practitioners who aren't just talking in theory, they're talking about what's in their businesses. So thank you so much for coming on the show and giving us some good shout outs to great Jacksonville agents. Yes. Of course, guys, if you want to go check out the show notes for this episode, you'll find direct links to Tracy's podcast and his handles. So go listen and see what you can learn from some of the agents that are coming on his show, follow them and figure out what you can be doing to go make things better. Even in a changing market, houses are always bought and sold. It just takes a pro to figure it out. Tracy, thank you so much for coming on the show and tell your bride, we hope she does well in the transitioning market too. (laughs) Thanks, Lee. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Okay, now don't forget to go try follow-up boss so that your business can continue to expand in professionalism and then you can meet some more crazy people yourself. I really appreciate follow-up boss sponsoring this episode, but mainly I appreciate them for giving y'all double the free trial time with no credit card required. So make sure you go to followupboss.com slash crazy and then let me know what you think. I'll see you guys next time. As always, I'm so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you're a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, or frankly, you just need to one of the story you just heard, then make sure to DM me on Instagram at Lee Thomas Brown or tweet me at Lee Brown or frankly, any social network where you hang out. I'm there. And if you had some fun, then you totally want to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. 